All right, welcome everybody. Today we are talking about generating leads. So in the last episode, Chris and I talked about kind of where, how you pick your farm, where you start to look for deals. And I wanted this discussion to be about how to start generating those leads or how to start finding those deals. And especially now, that is a headache or an obstacle for a lot of people. The market's still very hot. Deals are hard to come by. And so I uh, wanted to have Chris on to share his insights um, since this is kind of the crux of your business or a large part of your business uh, for you to share insights with everybody on how to start generating those leads. Sure. Well, yeah, so I mean, from, from, from the very beginner standpoint, you got to hit the, what if my budget is minimal to zero? Um, I think you have to start with, uh, we were in a mastermind together, Elevate, and, and we were talking about it. Um, you had a great point that any kind of service business, uh, air condition, plumbing, your carpet guy, uh, uh, electrical, uh, uh, electricians, um, those people are going in and out of houses all day. And uh, I got a buddy that runs something called Positive Home Entertainment. He does high-end smart homing. You know, he smarts out homes. And, but he still comes across in these, in these big, beautiful neighborhoods. And there's a four or 5,000 square foot home just sitting there empty, just kind of decayed. And all he has to do is send me that address, and, and, and it might go nowhere. But it also could be a hundred thousand dollar wholesale payday, or a five hundred, a five thousand square foot home. Literally, he had one of these. He was redoing a home. I was with him, like a seven, eight thousand dollar home, and right next door was a just abandoned. It had to be at least forty eight hundred to five thousand square foot home. It went nowhere for me. Actually, while I'm talking to you, going, I'm gonna go back and see if anything happened to that house. <laughs> That's right. It was just there and it's an address and I can take that address and find that owner and I can do it for free first, go on the internet, find out the address, who's the owner. Sometimes some numbers will pop up. You can do people search or uh, another one that's not coming to mind. We used to pay $19 a month just for one-offs to go on and put in that address and see who the last owner was. You might find four or five phone numbers, call them. What if the owner answers you know, one of those phone numbers. Well, now I'm talking to the person who's the decision maker on that property. So any kind of service, any kind of person, a post office, your, your, your garbage guy, your recycle guy, they are driving through neighborhoods. And if you can have a relationship with them and they can take 10 seconds and, and text you an address, that is a free marketing channel that you can then bless them and pay them a finder's fee if you get that property some, some way or another. Um, so that would be first. Um, and then as you begin really to, what, oh, go ahead. What you, real quick, what is a, uh, what do you think is a reasonable finder's fee? Well, I used to say 500 to a thousand, but I've kind of opened it up and said it could be anywhere from $500 to 10%. I know that 10% is really high, but I want to leave myself open to, they could be a home run hero. They might get one deal with me and make uh, a $10,000 wholesale and I give them $1,000, right? What could $1,000 do for that person's family? You know, especially November and December, right? That's gonna be a different Thanksgiving or Christmas. And then that might motivate them because I, one, did what I said I was gonna do to then say, this guy actually did a transaction with me. I'm gonna look for more properties that might lead to your next acquisitions person. They leave their career and come join you. You don't know. Yeah, sure. So that's kind of, um, I kind of forgot your original question, which you just asked me. Well, just, you know, ballpark. If, if somebody yeah. is talking yeah. to their postman and he sure. says, yeah, I, I can bring you a lead. Is there a fee that I would get? Sure. You know, Anywhere from $500 to 10%. You know, because generally it's a five thousand dollar deal. I'm going to give them five hundred bucks. That's still ten percent. Um, so uh, is that right, or is that be fifty dollars? Would be ten percent, right? I'm sorry, I'm totally I haven't drank my spark yet. <laughs> anyway, I say anywhere from five hundred dollars 
to 10% because I don't know what type of property they're going to bring me. Mm -hmm. So I know if I'm fair to them, they're going to return the favor and bring more properties. to me. Sure. I've heard of some other people doing um, like $25 for any lead. Right? Any, yeah. Yeah. So they're, whether the deal works out or not, it just incentivizes them to just keep bringing leads yeah. and not you try just want to, to be real specific on what type of lead because they could just go drive the neighborhood and go down one street and give you 35 houses. Like, Wait a minute. Now. There's <laughs> well, a specific good look of a house that I'm, it's the worst house in the neighborhood, not every house in the neighborhood, but yeah, there's guys that'll pay five, 10, 15, 20, $25 a house. Once they've trained um, that person to go find what it is they're looking for. Sure. All right, so what? So number one, we have uh, for generating leads, referrals, asking other people in the business or service industries that are out in neighborhoods um, for those leads. Uh, what would be another good idea? Well, then you can get into um, uh, a cost of, of time and fuel and, and choosing to drive neighborhoods. Uh, again, you're going to find, and we should do a video like this sometime where I, oh, go drive and I'll record it, uh, like with Jeremy, and show like when we drive into a neighborhood, what we mean by the worst house in the neighborhood. You know, the grass is not mowed, the things that you can see, the, the siding or trim is, is starting to decay, um, the roof looks pretty aged, maybe even coming apart here, the, 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 um, the shells, the uh, the ceramic tile on top. Maybe you can see some pieces are missing. You basically are looking for some pretty good deferred maintenance. You're gonna write down that address um, and then you're gonna go back and again, try to find that owner. Um, and then what you can do is uh, spend the, the least amount, 15, $20 a month to have a service to look those up. And they're generally gonna you know, produce one to five phone numbers, maybe an email. Um, or you can start uh, increasing your budget and paying for an actual service um, that skip traces um, uh, bulk, you know. So if you're going to go out and say, hey, I need to come home. Um, I'm going to do this five days a week. I need to come home with at least 50 addresses a week. Um, or you say, hey, I'm going to get 20 addresses a day. So that's 100 at the end of the week. Uh, again, if you have a nine to five, you can come home and do a simple letter, uh, personalized, that says my wife and I live close by, or drive in the neighborhood, sell property, see that you're the owner. Would you be interested in, in possibly talking with us in us um, acquiring that property? And you do it in your own words. A lot of people do it handwritten so that they can guarantee the person that owns it knows this wasn't generated, um, this was handwritten. And I know some guys, that's how they started. We did it. Man, I had my kids, uh, one was in charge of stamps, one was in charge of licking envelopes. Then we went to the wash rag on the envelope because we were doing so many. Um, my daughter, who's 16 at that time, was 14, 13, 14, maybe 12, and she had decent handwriting, better than me. So she started writing some of the addresses. Um, so that's one way. Or you can bump up the budget and do something like the, the driving for dollars um, uh, or, or, or the other one, the deal machine, and you pay them. And you take a picture and it pulls up the owner and you can actually click start marketing campaign. And that person's gonna get a postcard. And it's gonna go, what's cool is it's not gonna go to that address unless the owner lives there. If the address is absentee, meaning it pops up and you see that the owner has a different address, that's where it's going to go. The postcard is going to be a picture of that house mailed to the, the address that shows where the owner lives. And they're going to get that. And obviously they'll look at that and go, that's a house I own. And they're going to flip it over and there's going to be a small note um, that was printed on it that says, hey, this is Chris. I'd be interested in, in buying this property. Would you be interested in selling? Um, give me a phone call or give me a text. And I think you said something at that mastermind that I have never done any printed um, marketing where I didn't say call, right, but to say text. And I think people prefer text at least the first couple of to vet you and then they'll get on a phone call. 
Right. Yeah. When we did that marketing, our response rate was much higher. And, you know, you get a couple of texts and you know, you're, that this could work out and then you hop on the phone call, you know, yeah. eventually you go to the phone call. Our acquisitions but, do that now. They send out 250 to 400 texts every couple of hours. And they are instructed to not text more than two or three times. And at, meaning if there's an interest and then the second or third text, they're saying, would there be a good time to hop on the phone and just discuss a little bit more? Sure. So that's, that's the next bump up is you're paying money for paper and printing cartridges and stamps, or you're going to go up a little bit higher and you're going to go ahead and pay a service to do all that for you because you don't, you do have the budget, but you don't have the time to do all of that. Um, or you're going to bump up and say, I'm going to go to someone like a, a bat skip tracing and I'm going to just start uh, uploading all of my leads there and they're going to skip trace them for a, a cents on the dollar. And then when that's done, I can either text um, those owners and say, uh, and you can do it from the program. So you're not on your phone and you're not using your phone number. And then when they come in, eventually it can get to your phone number because you're saying, Hey, second or third text, um, would it be okay if I call you? Um, and that way they're looking for a call. So therefore it's no longer a cold call. They already have a conversation with you and they're expecting a phone call from you. So they're not alarmed like a cold call saying, you know, where most people are on the defense if they don't know the number you've asked for permission to call them. Sure. So what's the process for people listening or what's the process of that skip trace? Because I think a lot of people are familiar with looking up a house on the county records and they get the address, but a lot of people aren't familiar with how do you get that phone, the, you know, phone numbers, emails, contact information, so you can directly reach out. Yeah, you, so one, you can go drive and build a list of 100, or you can go on a service, and there are many of them out there, where you can pick a zip code that you're familiar with. Um, and then you can, and, and that might be 10,000 addresses. And you're like, well, I don't just want to blindly send 10,000 out. So then they give you on programs like batch leads with batch skip tracing, you can start picking. You can say, I only want three bedroom, two bath. So then it shrinks the list to whatever that is. And then okay, you so, say. So you can take the address to them let's say um, batch skip tracing is that yep. okay so you let's say you drive through your neighborhood there's a house that looks like it hasn't been loved in a while and there's mail piled up and you figure it's empty you can take that address and pay a small fee and they'll give you the contact information yep right? if you're going to be a one-off person there's one called a single skip trace I think it was it's it was 90 or 95 cents and you know people are like wow that's a lot if you're doing one off it's not a lot i mean if you if you paid 95 cents to get someone's contact information and then three weeks later you assign that contract for five thousand dollars are you going to be griping about paying 95 cents <laughs> no yeah, you're not ever <laughs> no right so if if you're ordering bulk skip tracing then you're not bringing the address to them. You're buying a list like you would if, if you were buying a list off of list source where you're just yep. getting names and addresses. It's the similar, a similar process, correct? Yep. And, and depending on um, coaching or, or groups that you join, um, you can get a discount. In, in, you know, like at list source, people pay. What's the, what do you normally pay at list source? It varies depending on how many criteria I have. Right. So. For me, I did some math, and by joining TTP, which was Brent Daniels' uh, coaching group to be a part of, by joining that, I looked at both my partners and said, if we each brought 2000 that's $4,000. If we pull this many addresses and skip trace, but we're only paying one cent or two cents on list source and this, then, you know, in three, four, five months, we've already paid for the membership to be a part of that TT pro, TTP program. 
So um, that's why that Elevate Mastermind is, is a good thing to be a part of because in those relationships, you might find a discount on how to get your lists pulled cheaper. So a lot of people will come to me and say, I don't have this $4,000, but would you skip trace them for me? And so I can enter them into mine for a small fee and I'll do it for them because of the discount I get, which is still way cheaper than what they would normally do. And then they'll make some deals and then they'll go in on their own and they don't need me anymore. Um, so, but yeah, you're going to, you're going to get a, you're going to go through list source or a batch skip or, 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 or there's, there's so many out there. And I would just say, find the one and the leadership that, that you tend to believe in, like all things, the one that you're comfortable they're going to perform. And then, yeah, you, you buy the addresses, the information, but, but to not waste money, you hone in. So I don't just want three bedroom, two bath in this zip code, but now I click on there. There's a way to click that says absentee owner, right? So that means they own the house, the three bedroom, two bath, but they don't live in it. So they either have a, a, a relative living in it or they're renting it which could lend itself to a landlord who may be tired. And then I can pick, I mean, you can fine tune this. You get to choose what you want. I can say they've owned it for this many years. Then I can choose, um, I want everybody to have at least 35% equity in that home or higher, right? So they've got money in the deal. So that if I call them, they can negotiate. If they don't have any equity, they're probably not going to be motivated to sell to me unless a couple of strategies subject to and things we can talk about later. But so, but because I don't want to waste money, I say, well, I want them to have at least this much equity in the home, which will give me a fighter's chance to maybe negotiate a, a deal with that seller. And then once you've kind of fine tuned and you've gone from 10,000 in that zip code to 1500, you feel comfortable about buying I mean, skip tracing that list. So now instead of sending 10,000 at 15 cents a, a skip trace, I'm only sending 1,500. So I'm staying smarter in my budget. And then even in that, they'll get done and say, hey, we did it. And out of that 1,500, it was 1,286 that got hits where we could give you their information, phone numbers and emails. So, and so I'm only charged for the 1,286, um, and now I know it's just a matter of how do I wanna go after them? Do I want to do all of it? Um, meaning that I wanna mail them something, I'm gonna call them, and I'm gonna text them. And then you can do that different ways, right? You can say, well, I'm gonna text them immediately. So I'm gonna text 100 every day. And then those answers are gonna start coming in, right? And, but then I'm going to wait five days, seven days, and I'm going to throw something in the mail to all 1,286, right? And then I'm going to wait at maybe two weeks because I'm going to text everybody in the first six days, but then I'm going to wait two weeks on my calendar and I'm going to start calling all 1,286. Or I'm going to pay a VA $4 uh, to $8 an hour to call all 1,208. And that's just based on what kind of budget you want to build. Um, and so then they're getting hit immediately on text within the first six days if I pulled that one. If I'm doing 200 a day, if I'm doing 100 a day and it's 1,200, it's going to take me 12 days. I mean, you get to choose. You get to choose how aggressively you want to go after them. So, yeah, once you have the information, it's just figuring out your process for reaching out to those people, how many you want to reach out to or how fast. Yep. Yep. Do, you, do you think in your experience is there a best way to reach out to them man is it if, if uh if i had that answer i could uh, i would open my own market you know and that's the thing i tell people i'm like you don't know what chad's personality chad owns this house and you're going after it but you don't know who chad is chad might be the postcard guy that texts you back Chad might be the personality that says, I don't mind somebody cold calling me. Ah, you know, it's all about relationships. Or Chad might be someone that I would rather not talk to someone, but I have no problem texting back and forth. I don't know that personality of that seller, but I do know that I can put 
different hooks in the water to to eventually reach Chad. Yeah. Um, so, but I think kind of like golf, I, I tell my kids, you know, like people will say, is our iron clubs better or are graphite is wood ever going to make a compact? Well, golf, they're really smart. They'll go for a while and say, Oh, you know, graphite's really making a, you know, it's really, it's really, it's really doing well on the tour and blah, blah. And so we all go out and buy graphite. And then two or three days later, you know, steel seems to be making a comeback. You know, steel shafts really seem to be performing well. But then what do you do? You go out and buy steel. Well, you've got both. And then a few years later, you know, they're doing something with that graphite. You know, it's really good. <laughs> you know, so I think it's the same thing. Right now, text is performing. And you might see a few cold callers. But I know a guy in Utah who's hired a guy in Florida who owns a cold caller. And he's telling me, here's my board. Here's the deals I have. And right now his cold callers are really performing. But another guy is going to say, hey, the numbers just don't work for cold callers right now. It makes more sense to text. We're seeing a, a larger return in tech. But I got a friend who still sends out 5,000 ringless voicemails a day. One VA, she drops them once a day. They ring back to his assistant. It's working, you know. And then you've got the whole pay-per-click. You've got the people that said I wasted millions of dollars on it and then you've got i know a guy who's learned it himself and he's like i've got 45 deals on the board and 40 of them are for google adwords it's a good point there's no magic pill if if, if there was one that was the best then the others would disappear yeah. it's right? person you know i probably you know i'm fascinated when i hear your story about the first 45 to 50 houses you built with no bank financing the first thing that comes to mind, honestly, why do I want to hang out with Chad? He was persistent and he was perseverant. That's it. That's why I want to be around Chad. Not because he's going to tell me, because he's going to tell me how he's tried every marketing channel. and He's going to tell me about how every person he talks to. But the one thing I want to get from him is what is it that keeps him going? Why is he persistent? Why is he perseverant? And then when I hear everybody's story, it's like they're, they're trying everything. But the one thing they're not doing is quitting. Yeah, right. So, yeah, I think if somebody's trying to figure out, well, how do I reach out to sellers? And too many people, you know, think they kind of get stuck and don't reach out because they're saying, well, I don't know. Should I email them? Should I send them a postcard? Is a letter better? Do I need a yellow letter or a white letter? Should it be handwritten? You know, should it be real long? Should it be 10 words in one sentence? And really, our answer is what? Yes. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. The best letter is the one that you mailed out, not the one that you're thinking about. And uh, I got some good, uh, you know, the guy with the, the, I was telling you that one session with the, the flip flops and he got out here and taught me. We were driving on some part of Phoenix and we were not on my side of Phoenix. We were on the west side. And I remember him saying this, and I still remember it to this day. His name is Brad. He said, Chris, and he was a church planter, youth minister, and I was a church planter, pastor, youth minister, you know, so we had that commonality. And he said, here's why you'll do good, Chris. You understand the people in this neighborhood. Yeah, you don't know any of them. You don't know anybody in that we were driving by a subdivision. He goes, you don't know anybody in that subdivision. But you know what they're thinking about and what's important to them. They're, they're family people, they, they wanna pay their bills, they, they don't wanna go in debt, you know what's pushing on them. And, 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 and when I say to all of our people watching this, think about you. Now think about you in a distressed situation or a situation that's causing a little bit of pressure. What would be the decision that makes most sense to you? And you said it in a mastermind, um, regardless of the marketing, you're trying to get to that person so that you cannot sit across the table from them, but somewhere in that conversation, they sense that you've now come on their side of the table and you're both trying to figure out the situation. Once you're there, that's a person that believes in you. You've sold them on you. And so now they're willing to do a transaction with you. So in regards to marketing, it's very fun to talk about. Um, and it seems that different people find different um, strategies that work. 
But if we were to talk to that person two or three years later, they're gonna tell us that they, they started to see that go down uh, for whatever was going on in the world and they began to make a pivot. And I think if you can be persistent and persevere, that means you're always not willing to die on just that marketing strategy, but you're gonna pivot when you see that that is not producing um, cost per acquisition that it needs to. It's time for us to begin. We can keep doing it because we have seen success, but as we do that to pay the bills, we need to begin to transition and find the one that's gonna, you know, have a, a least cost to greater on our acquisition or our profit, you know. So it all works and it all eventually will not work, but just, you know, stay persistent and persevere and pivot. Yeah, great advice. So, and in all of, they're all just tools to get to that conversation with the seller. And so uh, as long as your driving for dollars is working, keep doing it. As long as the, the small batch mailing out a handwritten letter is working, if that's what you like, keep doing it. If, if you like social media and you want to do Facebook ads, there are plenty of people doing well with Facebook ads. So, yeah, I love it that whatever tool you want to use, whatever tool fits you best, use it. And as long as it's working, use it. When it stops working, get a different tool. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that that's the crux of it. That's awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. So people should not, too often I see people who, who aren't taking steps because they feel like they just don't know the exact right way to do it. And so I think that's great encouragement that there's no exact right way. Um, and we didn't say it earlier, but I would say it now. And I, I, you know, I love our, that we have our Facebook page and our mastermind, but I wanted to say it today, but our group's so good. And we, 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 we maximize and, and the time goes so fast because everybody's enjoying it and getting a lot out of it that the two that were in the seat today and, and, and back to me and you, it's massive imperfect action it's constantly failing forward you're going to fail more than you succeed but you only need three hits out of ten to go to the hall of fame you know if you talk to a hundred i i will always you know if you talk to a hundred sellers and you only get one deal and you made 10 grand on that deal you're not going to regret the other 99 phone calls you know, you're just not, you're going to say it was because of those that I built up the callousness to not get my feelings hurt through the rejection to get to that one win. I had a buddy, he, he went through like 65 no's and then he made a 50 grand wholesale. And my first question was, are you still feeling those 64 rejections? No. <laughs> right. Yeah. Kind of what like, rejections? Yeah. They were like that meddler, right? They were wind beneath my wings. You know, they just kept taking me up. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, really, you know, for a person who's going through those rejections, it looks like failure at the time. But that is really forming you for success. You know, your ability to keep talking to people, yep. keep trying keep improving your wording, keep improving how you relate to people and build that rapport. That is what will bring the success and pay off long run. Yeah. You can't do it without the struggle. So. My last comment is this. I'm all about like raw, raw, you know, um, but like uh, Rocky three and Rocky four, you know, what is the best scenes? It's when he's gone through his adversity and then he goes back and just starts training and the music comes on, and, right? And nobody sees it. It's just him and his few trainers. But he's, prefer he's preparing for that ring moment. And then like in Russia, you know, he's back to lifting logs and running in the snow and working out in a barn, you know? But it, it inspires you. And I think if you can get on the phone, it's really funny. You remember that commercial? That it, I don't remember what it was that it sold, but there was a band following a guy around that was playing and they were like, Roy! Roy, 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 you know, it was like the band that plays Eye of the Tiger. Yeah. <laughs> like, wouldn't it be great if we had an inspirational song or band that followed us to keep us inspired? When you get on the phone 
or you're face to face and you're being rejected, just go back to that. Hey, this is just training. This is just making me better. I got to get through these 50 no's because I'm about to get to an incredible yes. There it is. It's all, all steps in the process to get to the yes. That's awesome. All right. Well, I hope that was encouraging to everybody. I hope you got some good action steps. If you're struggling to find deals, there are a whole bunch in here. If you missed them, go back and listen again. So appreciate your time, Chris, and your insights as always. Thanks. Thanks I appreciate it.